Today, we are going to make not just one batch of candles, not two, not three. Today, we are going to make four small batches of candles. Why, you might ask? Well, why not? Hi, everyone. My name is Wade Thomas. I'm the owner of Black Tie Barn Candle Company. As most of you know, this channel is here to teach about candle and wax melt making, as well as the business side of things. If you are not currently a subscriber and are interested in other current videos, as well as all upcoming videos, hit the subscribe button below and the little bell icon so you are notified when new videos are posted. All right, so I typically work in my candle workshop, and I think many of you know that. However, with my recent relocation, I will be very busy creating a new workshop for quite a while. So I thought, what a perfect opportunity to show others how to make candles without the convenience of a dedicated workshop. Let's face it, not everyone has a dedicated space. In fact, most newer candle makers don't. So today I'm going to demonstrate that you can achieve the exact same results from your kitchen. Yes, I will be still using a few tools and supplies that you may not have, but the idea is still the same. Your kitchen can make a great temporary workspace. And to prove that, I'm not gonna just make one simple batch of candles and call it good. Let's make it a bit more difficult by making four different small batches. Hopefully, this video will give you a little bit of encouragement and confidence in making candles right from your own kitchen. I will be taking you through the entire process start to finish with several tips mixed in as well. And don't worry, I will edit and cut down dead space and fluff so this video doesn't get crazy overly long. Also, I recorded all the video first and I will record voiceover over that so that I can focus on explaining where needed without being too distracted. That isn't something I typically do, but I wanted to give it a whirl. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just put my pitcher on, pouring pitcher on the scale, and I'm going to weigh out the wax. We're gonna be doing a double boil method because I don't have melters. I'm not using my workshop. I wanna do this like others would do from their kitchen. Now, that being said, I would invest in some type of melter, presto pot, something like that. That would be a great first investment or early investment, but you don't need it. And I'm gonna do the entire video today without using any type of melter. We're just going to weigh out the wax we need per batch. And I am gonna use a couple different pouring pitchers and you'll see why it kind of speeds up the process if you're going to do several batches. But we're just gonna get uh, the proper amount for the first batch of candles loaded up and we're going to put it in the double boiler. And you'll get a better shot of that here in a minute. Now, the first batch of candles we're going to make today is hazelnut coffee and it's gonna be in a small mason six ounce candle. Um, these take HTP, well, the wax that I'm using for this is actually a Pro Blend 600 um, and it is a 50% soy, 50% paraffin. In fact, just to make this simple, we're going to use that same wax combination for all of these candles um, that's you really want to make your batches when you're doing several batches at once uh, similar type of candles right so we're going to use the same wax for all these candles and this particular candle and this wax uses HTP 62 wicks so I'm going to be loading up four of those wicks in each one of these jars now this little wick setter tool is a great little device and so if, uh, if you're interested in that let me know I'll try to remember to put that in the description but one thing I want to mention too is each of these lots of or batches of candles, I'm going to make a slightly different way just to show you that you can achieve great results using different methods. For example, this first one, I'm just going to wick these up and not doing anything special other than something that you may or may not have seen before is kind of a tin foil method. So after I get all these wicks set, I'm going to wrap them all in just a little bit of aluminum foil. And that can kind of help problem waxes that tend to shrink or get wet spots or get sinkholes a lot, it will help them slow down the cool time a little bit more. So you're gonna see that that's what I'm doing here. This is not something I do very often, but every once in a while when working with tricky wax or jars that are taller than they are wide, which is not the case with these, but those type of jars, this tinfoil method can really help out if you notice that you're having repeat problems with a particular jar or wax. Again, I don't really need it with this type of wax or with this jar, but I just wanna show you the results. Also, I pour almost all my candles into little aluminum baking pans, and there are a couple good reasons to do that. First of all, it's really meant just to keep your countertops clean. 
no matter where you're doing this, if you put your candles in this tin foil pans, it's, uh, it's going to cut down on your messes quite a bit. So that's the real big bonus. That's the major benefit to it. But it also will help you create candles that will cool slowly, more slowly than you would otherwise. And so right now I'm doing, it's awfully redundant using both foil wraps and the foil tin pans. Normally I wouldn't do that, but um, I do pretty much pour most of my candles into these tins or into these pans. And then you're going to see me flipping through my recipes quite a bit. Um, I use a program you'll see it in other videos that keeps track of all my recipes and my materials. And so I'm just kind of getting these in the order that I plan on making them today. Uh, preparation and process is really the key to uh, staying on top of everything. So while the, while the other wax is melting, I'm going to go ahead and get the next batch of wax measured up into the next pouring pot. And I will be able to set this into the pouring pot or into the, uh, the can boiler uh, along with the other one just to kind of get that melted, started to melt it as well. I'm going to show you a little bit of what this kitchen setup is. Uh, you'll see that I've just kind of brought everything out that I'm going to need. And you'll see my little boy and background. I think you caught a little glimpse of my, glimpse of my wife as well. But um, yeah, I'm just showing you. I just, all I did is use the counter space and just set out everything I'm going to need for the day. Okay, so again, I'm just starting the preparation on the next little batch of candles. Each one of these batches is just four candles. This next, the next batch of wax, which I'm not going to get into too much till we start making it, is called Mum Farms, and it it's, it is what it smells like. It smells like mums. Um, it's also going to take an HTP 62 wick, so I'm just going to get those pre-tabbed, pre-wicked, while I'm still waiting for that first uh, measured out amount of wax to melt down. Like I said, I do kind of edit out and cut out a lot of this uh, as we go forward to kind of speed up the process. But I really wanted the first time around to you see the process I used to wick the jars. And this one, we're not going to use any tin foil around the jars, but we're still going to put them in the tin pan and set them aside. And now both pans are ready to go. And you can use several different methods to keep track of which which uh, batch of candles is going in which pan. In this particular case, they're using the same wick, so I, I'm not really concerned about mixing them up. But normally I would. I'd, I'd be making one at a time or I'd be labeling them some, in some fashion. Here you can see that I'm just measuring out, or I'm, I'm taking temperature of the first melted pouring pot and it was about 190, 195 degrees. So it's, it's uh, plenty good enough to go ahead and come out. First thing I'm going to do is add UV inhibitor. I add this to all of my candle wax products, um, including melts. And that's just to cut down on some of the color uh, fading that happens after a while uh, of candles and melts sitting out. And I just add it to everything to be consistent. Uh, with this batch size, it requires uh, 0.75 uh, teaspoons of UV inhibitor. Next, this four candles of hazelnut coffee are going to require uh, basically nine uh, drops of brown liquid dye and six drops of black. And my older boy decided to show up. I don't think he realized he was on camera. So he just stood there for a minute, watched what I was doing. <laughs> And then I think he realized it and uh, and took off. So after I get the dye added, I'm just going to give it a good little stir. The brown's in there. Now I'm adding the six drops of black. I prefer the liquid dyes. It's just easier to control color consistency uh, batch to batch. But I do, you probably notice me using little paper towels to hold the bottles of dye and to grab the uh, top end of it and to put the drops in because liquid dyes are very, very messy. And one little drop on your hands or anywhere else is just going to make a mess. So you got to be very, very careful. So now it's time to measure out the oil. I use generally around eight to nine percent for most of my candles, um, particularly in this wax. So I'm just measuring that out on the scale. In this batch, we used 24 ounces of wax and we're using 2.2 ounces of fragrance. 
So I mix that in. I usually add it around 180, maybe a tad warmer. Um, and then I just uh, blend it for a good you know, minute or so. Now you saw me using a little plastic cup there. I was just, again, using what was on hand. I was trying to use mostly things that I think people would have around the house. Um, and you know, I would normally use maybe a Pyrex, a Pyrex jar or something like that, a glass little jar to measure up my oils and then just wipe it down and reuse it. But today um, I was just using some disposable ones just to kind of cut down on the time of me having to clean everything in between because I was making a video. So now you can see I've been mixing it up and uh, it's, it's nice and blended. And so I'm just going to wipe down the spoon and then the same paper towel that I wiped on the spoon, we're going to start pouring the jars. Now the ones that are wrapped in aluminum foil, it's a little trickier to see the, uh, the level to stop at, but I've been pouring in these jars for so long that uh, I just kind of know where it's at. And I'll generally fill up pretty much the entire way on each candle and then uh, and then I'll go top them all off just to make sure they're all even at the very end. And again, my recipes are pretty exact, so I usually have the exact amount of wax and oil and, and total blend that I need to fill up the candles right to where I want them. And once I'm done, of course, I wipe out the, the pouring pitcher and I'm not speeding up the video here, but it sure looks like I am. <laughs> I'm just going crazy on that. I didn't realize <laughs> how ridiculous I looked when I was cleaning those out. So, um, and then I couldn't find my spray bottle that has the alcohol in it. Again, my workshop is in disarray right now. So I just squirted it in right out of the bottle. And again, we'll just give it another wipe down and there's me going in super fast motion again. It really looks like I'm speeding up the camera, but I'm not. So another quick check on the uh, the canning pot there to see how the other one's melting down. And then back to locking in my wicks here. These are little wick centering devices and tools. I have several different kinds. These are the ones I prefer for these jars. Um, and then I give the wicks a couple good twists, you know, a couple times around. Nothing crazy. You don't want to overly twist them or over tighten them. Um, and, then, uh, and then I just hook them on and make sure they are centered. And then because I'm using these 10 pans, I will go ahead and cover them as well. And I do that, I guess, maybe kind of to keep some scent in there, but more than anything, it's just to keep debris out and let me know that I'm done with those. I just don't want to drop anything else in the candles. So now we're on to that second batch of candles. And uh, that was the benefit of being able to melt the other one while this one, um, while I was working on the first one, because now this is pretty much ready to go added my UV inhibitor like always, and the same amount of wax on all these candles, same amount of UV inhibitor. The really what's changing is this fragrance and the dye. So in this case, this is Mum Farm, and it's really just a little bit of uh, yellow and red. It kind of makes this orangish, kind of orangish, peachish red color. Um, you'll see at the end of this video, I post the final results, although the, the picture um, of this particular candle didn't quite look right in, in camera. Um, it's a little bit more orange uh, than what you'll see at the end here. But anyways, the dye's in there, just getting it mixed up. Now here's a little tip. I normally use little paper plates, but I don't have them on hand. So I'm just using a little uh, Dixie cup here and it, I can just put a dab of the wax on there and make sure the color looks right. And occasionally, in this case, you can see it didn't. Uh, I misread my instructions and left one drop of red out and it was enough that I noticed it. Um, so I, even though my recipes are down and exact and I just follow them, occasionally I always test um, just a little dab onto a paper plate or paper cup to make sure that my colors are right. Next here's another little trick. Pouring um, out of these bottles sometimes is difficult. So if you pour down a straw or a skewer or something like that, that liquid will, uh, you won't make a mess, you won't spill. It'll go right down into your uh, measuring container. So when I'm pouring into something low like this, normally I make bigger batches so I don't have to do this. I can just kind of pour fast and, and it comes out fine. But when making little batches like this, this is a little trick that can really help you not make a mess with your oils. So now that I have that all measured out, I'm just gonna go ahead and add in. Again, I'm adding about around 180. 
and we're just going to keep blending it like I normally would. And you'll notice that I'm using a spoon there. Um, also, you'll notice that I'm, I'm constantly check, checking the temperature. The reason I use, but back to the spoon, the reason I use a spoon is you don't get air bubbles. Um, I, I prefer a spoon or a spatula. A lot of people you'll see using skewers, but they're just too thin and you have to really whip it around a lot and that can cause a lot of air bubbles to get trapped. And I really don't like whisks for the same reason. They cause a lot of air bubbles. So I prefer just a good old plastic or wooden spoon or a spatula. They're also very easy to clean in between batches as well. So same process here. Went ahead and poured all the candles and then I topped them off. And we're gonna do my high motion super speed wipe down of the pouring pitcher again. And then I'm gonna put my wick centering devices on there as always. And each one of these, you know, batches going forward, I'll kind of cut out a little bit more of these fine processes because you've already seen them once or twice by then and kind of getting used to the process. And then we'll cover them up. Now we're on to the next batch. So again, I have all wax measured out ahead of time, getting both in the canning pot, um, which is a really good investment too. If you are going to do the double boil method, um, this is a get one of those big canning pots because it can hold two, two, three, or maybe even four of those pouring pitchers at once. So you can constantly have wax melting. So this next set of jars, I'm going to do it a little bit different. Like I said earlier, these ones, I'm not doing anything with aluminum foil around the outside, but they're going into the uh, oven to get preheated a little bit just for about five or 10 minutes just to warm them up. And again, these are all different methods all different methods um, just to kind of show you that this wax is pretty easy to work with, but some waxes need a little bit of extra TLC. And, and in those cases, <coughs> preheating your jars can help a little bit. Um, warmer jars can al also help your, your uh, wick stickers stick to the jar a little bit better as well because it, that heat creates causes them to be a little tacky. So we're going to pull those out of the oven now that they're preheated and get those wicked up. So again, two of these, two of these, we ended up doing the preheat method. One of them we just did foil, and the other one we did nothing. So just all different methods to consider if you, uh, if it interests you, or if you feel like you're struggling with uh, certain parts of your candles, you know, um, wet spots, sinkholes, things like that, um, jar adhesion. Just feel free to try any of these methods. And again, I'm just putting in the UV inhibitor like the rest of the batches. By the way, for a lot of you that have been following my videos for a while now, you may be wondering why I sound a little bit different than I normally do. My voice has just kind of been going out today and it, it, it's compounded by the fact that I'm doing this video very late at night. I'm editing and, and doing this voiceover at like four in the morning. And for some reason later at night, my voice just starts to kind of go out. It sounds different later at night. So I apologize if I sound a little weird in this video. Anyways, so I uh, added the dye for this candle, added the UV inhibitor just like everything else, and now we're going to be measuring out the oil. This third candle, by the way, is a leather smelling candle. It's actually one of my favorites. Really smells like you're, you're, in, a, you're in a leather shop. This was actually, I made this specifically on request for a wholesale account uh, for a place, uh, for a lady that owns a leather shop, actually. I guess that makes sense. Um, so you notice me adding a little bit more dye here. Um, the reason I did that is every once in a while, I like to, especially with oils I haven't poured in a while, I, I like to make sure I can see them being added in and blending in. Um, and then, uh, and then I'll go ahead and add the dye. Um, but generally I add dye first. It's just, uh, I, at hotter temperatures, the dye tends to uh, blend in a little bit better, but I hadn't made this one for a while. So I was curious what the, if the fragrance itself um, would, would have any impact on the color of the wax. And so that's why I, after I added a couple drops of one color, I kind of stopped and went ahead and added the fragrance before adding the rest of the dye. It was more out of curiosity than anything. 
And again, while I'm mixing, I'm always checking the temperature. And once it gets to around, with this wax, once it gets to around 165 to 170 is when I pour. You know, soy you're going to pour cooler than that generally. Paraffin and other pair of soy you're going to pour a little bit hotter. But with this wax, around 165 is my favorite, especially if your jars are preheated or they're in pans like this that will help them slowly cool. If you're going to pour them straight onto a counter and have no insulation at all around them, then you might pour a tad hotter around 170. So once again, you'll see that uh, just enough wax and blend to top off those candles. And then we're going to twist the wicks one more time and secure them to the wick centering devices. Now the next jar after this is going to be slightly different. Um, the, the first three you've seen are either always in a mason like this or they're part of my fall line and, and those typically are in my mason jars. The next one is a year round scent, but I sell it in a straight sided jar instead. And you'll see those right here. So these ones I also put in um, the oven and mostly because I already had it preheated and I thought hey, it's preheated. Why not use it? And this is crackling birch. Um, this is my number one seller. It has been since I introduced it. Um, it's popular all year long, but it's, uh, I'd say it's more popular around winter, but I really sell it all the time. Um, what's nice about it is it's going to get the UV inhibitor like the rest of them, of course, but it just gets this one little drop of black and it's just enough to make it a very, very light gray. It's a, it's a great, great scent. Um, everyone loves it, men and women. Um, and it's one of my personal favorites as well. So this isn't one I really have to check the color on, but out of habit, you saw me grab, grab it and do it anyways. And uh, again, I'm just checking to make sure that temperature gets down to the right mark before I add it. Looks like it must be close or I wouldn't be measuring out the oil. I don't like to measure my oil out too far in advance. Um, I like to do it when it's ready just to you know, prevent spilling and accidents. And then I generally add it fairly slowly. Just don't want it to splash. And then I just keep blending it. Um, give it a nice good blend. Now I'm blending it longer than the video shows. I'm again cutting out that so it doesn't take too long. But uh, I get I make sure it's it's blended for a good minute or two, um, usually around a minute or so, as long as you're blending it nice and um, and consistent. Uh, and then these are the slightly different jars. They're they're about the same size overall, but they're more tall and a little bit more tall and narrow. These are the nine ounce straight sided jars that hold about six and a half to seven ounces of wax. But the same process, put on the same centering devices wick them up and cover them in the pan. So now what we're doing is pulling, well, let me let me pause this real quick and just say that uh, what I'm doing now is I let these cool. Um, so I'm not just pulling them out right, you know, why they're still liquid, obviously. So that's been several hours and they've now cooled. So now I'm gonna bring them back and show you pick up for the rest of the process. So starting in the, I'm going in the same order that we made them. I'm pulling these, these are the hazelnut coffees that we wrapped in aluminum foil. I'm just taking them out and I'm showing you, look, nice, perfect jar adhesion, real nice smooth sides and tops. Um, again, the tin foil trick is really beneficial and worth trying if you're really struggling with your wax um, cooling slow enough and adhering to the side of the jar or getting sinkholes. And then I get my bezeled wick clippers, wick trimmers. These are uh, these are amazing. Um, I'll put these in the description if you have not used them before as well. And I review all of my supplies in another video on my channel. Once I have them all trimmed, I flip them all over. Generally, I put the lids on first. I don't know why I didn't do that in this case, um, but I do on the rest. But I always flip them over and get my warning labels on. I use custom warning labels most of the time, but I am not in this case. Um, I just uh, wanted to go ahead and, and put on some standard ones just to kind of get these out quickly. But I do custom and make my own. Uh, but when in a pinch, the just the standard warning labels are perfect. <coughs> Once the warning labels are on, I have I designed all my own labels. 
Um, now I have several label variations, but these are my standard kind of signature line labels. And I have them printed on rolls. They have this kind of metallic-y finish to them, which is awesome. And um, I uh, have the same size, and I prefer the size because they fit all my jars really well. Now we're moving on to the leather candle. So I, I guess I lied. I thought I was going to do Mum Farm next, but we're doing the leather candle. And same process. We're just going to trim all the wicks real quick. And then we're going to lid them, which I believe I lidded them first. Yeah, so I got the lids on these ones ahead of time. And I will lid them as soon as I feel like the wax is, uh, is not going to Oh, and then you can see that lid I tossed all the way across the room. It's a good thing I don't have the audio on because it was super loud. Anyways, the lid keeps debris out. And I'll, I'll lid them as soon as I really can with no risk of, you know, just making sure they're solid. Um, sometimes even before. Once I can trim the wick without making any kind of mess or impacting the surface of the wax, then I'll lid them at the same time. And then same thing, I'll flip them over and label them. Apparently I didn't show labeling that one. Here's Mum Farm. It looks kind of dreamsicle-ish or something like that, or creamsicle, whatever you call that. It looks kind of like a peachish color. It's more orange than this uh, camera is showing. Flip them over. Add the warning label again. And then we're going to add on the product label. And this is all done, all done in the kitchen. Now I know, again, I have a lot of different supplies that you may or may not have, but this is all fairly common candle making supplies. Uh, this is the Crackling Birch. It's just a gorgeous candle. I, I love it, love it, love it. But again, I just wanted to kind of show you that you can do this process. You can still make several batches of candles. As long as you have preparation and you have some organization, you can do this anywhere. So they're all lit in. Get those labels on real quick. Flip them back over, apply their product labels as well. And that pretty much wraps them up. I mean, once the candles are done, I'll show you a few pictures here of after I take the product photos, what they look like. Thank you all very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you.